Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to honourable judges and all. I am Kasmarini Baharudin, a senior lecturer and my team members Dr. Adila Mustafa and Siti Nurul Mariam Abdullah from Faculty of Information Management, University Technology Mara Selangor Branch and Khalid Ayuba Abdullahi from Faculty of Technology Education Abu Bakar Tafawa Baliva University, Nigeria would like to share on the research title Understanding Information Ethics Practice Through the PAPA Framework. So here is the outline of the presentation, introduction, methodology, discussion, conclusion and recommendation. As for the introduction, according to Hawke in 2019, living in the information era exposed citizens to the inevitable challenges of being an ethical information practice. The question of right and wrong has been troubling human beings for centuries. Almost every man or woman faces the moral dilemma of determining what is right and what is wrong in everyday life. Smith, Neil Burke, and Burke in 1996 stated that information ethics is one of the crucial issues discussed from the 1980s until now. The issues have become increasingly important in recent years due to technological advancements, the personalization of the workplace and other social environments, including the growing population. According to Abu and Sabri in 2018, information issues including awareness and ethics are amongst the skills that receive the least attention among citizens. Only those with a high information literacy skill can judge and access the information received. Fake news spreading is a result of poor information ethics practice. This paper has missed the understanding of information ethics practice through the Mason 1986 framework, PAPA. It is an acronym for privacy, accuracy, property and accessibility provide a holistic view of the ethical issues of information. This study focused on the research dimension of PAPA framework components. So as for the ethics, it is actually symbolized the principle of right and wrong of individual choice in guiding behaviors. Originated from the Greek term ethos means the way of being, custom and human habits, and guidelines to influence human social behavior in a manner intended to protect and fulfill the right of individual in society. Ethics are moral principles or moral rules which govern a person's attitude and their behavior. As for information ethics, it actually deal with the moral conduct of information users based on their responsibility and so their accountability. Literature reports several factors that influence information ethics. Hawk in 2019, Chuang and Chen in 1999 highlighted seven factors that influence information ethics, which are first, globalization, second, individualism, third, privacy and information security, fourth, diversification of information works, fifth, the conflict between right to information and ethical use of information, sixth, access to information, seven, intellectual property rights. So as for PAPA framework, PAPA framework describes the ethical issues in the information age through four elements again, privacy, accuracy, property, and accessibility. The four components will explain the ethical issues surrounding the people, technology, and also environmental perspective. So here is the PAPA framework. According to the Sahih et al. 2021, privacy refers to the expectation of the fairness and control over personal information and the expectation of confidentiality. Privacy is also described as the ability of individuals to control the access others have to personal information about them. Second, accuracy deals with the authenticity, fidelity, and accuracy of information. Accuracy is in order to ensure that the information is correct and without any mistake. Third, the main concern in property is who owns the information. Property issues concentrated on ownership and the value of information. Research indicated two main issues in the property 
property including copyright and intellectual property right especially in information and communication technology fourth accessibility or the ability to obtain the data becomes increasingly important accessibility deals with the issues of what information does an individual or organization as a right or privilege in order to obtain what information condition and so what safeguard the process so as for the methodology a content analysis method is applied in this paper a literature search covers from the 1980s to the present including the prominent literature from the early interaction of pop-up the subject coverage range from the library and information science technology cybernetics and also medical and this study aims to identify the dimension of the PAPA framework from a broad range of the subject. This analytical analysis of the literature contents has been done in order to identify the research framework and also extract the dimension. So as for the discussion, analysis of the literature reveal an interesting blend of a component in information ethics using the PAPA framework. The analysis propose hybrid PAPA dimension as in figure one. All right, so figure one shows the hybrid PAPA. This is a proposed holistic framework from our research team for information ethics within library and information science LIS research that incorporated the variation of dimension in the components given by the growth of the people, technology and also information forces. This framework is an extended version of the PAPA framework whereby it co-locates 15 dimensions to the existing PAPA components. So as for the privacy, first, collection, as you can see here, is actually the amount of data and information that was personally identified had been collected and is stored in the database. Second, unauthorized secondary use internally which is data that has been collected for an individual purpose but has been used for other purposes, which is secondary use of purpose without authorization. Third, unauthorized secondary use externally, which is data that has been collected for one purpose but has been used for other purposes, can be secondary use of purpose, is disclosed to the external party. Four, improper access, which is data about individuals, is readily available for an authorized viewing or use. Fifth, errors is a protection against deliberate and accidental errors in personal data. Six, reduce judgment is actually inadequate automated process and mechanism of decision making. Seven, combining data, which is more the effect of data, combining personal data onto a large database. Second, accuracy. So, accuracy is actually information ownership. This actually honors who all accountability assigning responsibility for managing the information from patient to consumption. Second, misinformation, which is inaccurate claims are shared largely unwittingly and also without the intention to deceive. Right, so as for the property, okay, the first one is copyright. It's a legal right, have control over the world of a writer, artist, musician, and etc. Second, intellectual property, something that someone created or invented and that no one else is legally allowed to make, copy, or sell. Third, patents. It's actually an official document that gives someone who has invented something. So as for the accessibility, first, information literacy. So it's actually the ability to find, evaluate, organize, use and also communicate information in all its various formats, most notably in situations required hacking, problem solving or the acquisition of knowledge. So intellectual skills is actually the way of thinking and problem solving used by professionals in a field. Third, information channel is actually the medium used for transmission of information. All right. 
as for the conclusion and recommendation, it is clearly illustrated that the effect of the PAPA framework in information ethics research. PAPA framework provides a clear guidance on investigating the element of information science, libraryship, and information and communication technologies, including cybernetic research. This research supposes new ethical challenges for the library and information professional in ascertaining their roles and responsibility in this complex sphere and determining how they could assist the underprivileged people in upholding their right to access and use the information ethically. So actually, this research also contributes to provide conceptual guide for research applying the PAPA framework in the fields of library and information science, librarianship, and information and communication technologies. Hence, future research may validate this model for advancing their information ethics practice investigation. Right, so here are the listing of the references. All right, thank you so much for your attention.